Welcome everybody to Shout Word Podcast episode 8, I think. Um, gosh, it's been a hot minute since we've done this. I, I will take some responsibility for that. I've just been busy and tired and I, mean, I was also in I was also in South America for like three weeks. See doing there you work go. stuff. So I wasn't around. We have that and then I got a new puppy, so that's been taking up a crap Aww. ton of my time. I have not been receiving pictures of this puppy, and I am I now put, feeling I, betrayed. I put some in... I forgot where I put them. Maybe it was the donor chat. I forget. I'll post some in, in a bit. Um, so yeah, that's been taking up a lot of our time. Um, but yeah, here we are. So I'll introduce my guests officially. So first up, we have Ellipsis. How's it going, man? How are you? Um, I'm pretty good. Thank you very much. Good deal. I know I apologize it is a little late for you guys, but hopefully we'll crank this out and... I know it's kind of a weird time for a lot of people around the world. It's not our usual start time, but if you do miss any of this, the VOD will be up soon. Um, yeah. And then we have Sailder. How's it going, man? It's been going reasonably well. I've not been playing enough Shadow recently, but that will be starting to change from this week onwards. We are doing all raids now. There you, go. you have been playing the spec we need to talk about in tandem with Shadow the most, though. So honestly, <laughs> yes. it, kind of, it kind of works it works out well here. Yeah, I guess to give people some background, you have a couple of updates. You've been a bit more involved, I think, in Evoker and Warlock and other specs recently, too. So you've been kind of helping out all over the place recently. Yeah. Um, primarily Augmentation lately. I Now the Icy Veins Guide Writer, along with said Publix, The Shadow, and I'm Augmentation. We're now friends. But yeah. but uh, other than that, I've just, like, Augmentation has to have, like, so many toes in everybody's pie to work out what's good. So I've been doing a lot of everything. All right, so today we're going to talk about just a couple of things and just kind of bringing everyone up to speed on the state of what's been happening in this kind of long-ish patch cycle that we find ourselves in. So it is it is ten one five. We're still in this kind of season two area, but they've changed quite a lot. Um, they've done very specific hot fixes to our spec and lots of other specs. So we're going to talk about kind of that effect on. Both Mythic Plus and Raiding, I think we're going to cover Mythic Plus first because I think that's where a lot of the conversation has been happening, especially with the Great Push going on and, and other like MDI-related stuff um, and people talking about like doing high push keys, the nerf of the god comp, all that stuff that Shadow has uh, found itself at the center of. So I'm actually going to toss it over to Ellipsis first to kind of kick us off in this discussion because he actually wrote... A really good post on Wowhead. I would suggest you guys check it out if you haven't. I think kind of starting off from like a utility discussion perspective and really bring us in like, why has Shadow Priest been in this god comp for Mythic Plus? Why is it so desirable? And yeah, wh wh where does that synergy come from? So I'll talk to Ellie first. Um, I guess I'll start with the question of utility and why exactly Shadow is performing so incredibly well on that front. Because frankly, the tools we have for utility haven't really changed for right. a long time. Mindsooth returned and is now easier to use, but would still functionally be doing the same thing it was doing before Season it was one. an AoE ability. Or, oh yeah, um, sure. Now anyway. Uh, I will admit it is much easier to use as an AoE ability, and the few niche scenarios where we felt that the cooldown might let it down just haven't really occurred, because the way mm -hmm. we're using Mindsooth now is to just drop it on one pack and go past it. As opposed to how we used it in, if you remember, Halls of Atonement, for example, where you had to mine soothe mm. a lot yep. of different mobs from a lot of different packs to create a pathway through for people. Like, you can't... I think Halls of Valor is another good example. Anymore. Like, if you wanted to get Halls of Valor, like, those mobs before the bridge, I think oh, it was like... Oh, God, no. no. That was no, like no, three no. mine soothe casts, right? It was, um, it was four. It four, was four. Yeah, some, yeah. And it was four, and if you had bad timing on the Stormbringer... It could reset all of them. Yeah, yeah. you could. I, True. I had keys. Ones. Yeah. Like I had twenty sevens where I legitimately casted seven minesuits to get us through there. Yeah. Seven. So we have nothing like, like that yeah. in this season, which is good. No, nothing like that in this season. Nothing to cause the cooldown to be an issue. Um, mm -hmm. There are very, very few elementals in this season as well, which is the mob type that was most prevalent alongside um, various kind of mob mobs and pack types in the previous one, True. and that meant that like. You could mine through the pack, but the elemental wouldn't get it, so you couldn't get past that pack easily. Now we have very few elementals in these packs, and the, the packs are literally just all humanoids, or humanoids and a dragon, which is comical, frankly. But um, <laughs> the fact that Mindsooth works out incredibly, incredibly well in those situations, and Mindsooth has also been able to distance itself from mass stealth 
and the new ma mage's mass invisibility as well because a lot of the places where we use mind soothe very effectively the mobs also have stealth detection which means that you can't shroud skip them so mind soothe is the only real way to go around them you can also pull them to the side and do various things like that but they're not it's not as efficient or consistent and in some cases it's like a lot more dangerous to do things like that especially in halls of infusion yeah um Besides that, we have also got Master Spell. Master Spell has, in the past, been something that's been very useful in some keys in some situations. Usually we find, like, two to three good spots to use it per season. And usually within those two to three good spots, one of them is a make-or-break past X key level MD or die kind sure. of thing. Those You get one of those usually per yep. season. Um I'd like to also interject with that. Often those are usually an Sing additional single dispel, not yes. a requirement for an actual mass. So sure, sure. imps from warlocks in the past have done this. Yes, Last season, uh, for example, in... Oh gosh, what was the name Temple, of the game? Temple of the Jade Serpent, Temple of the Jade Shah. Serpent. Temple yep. of the Jade Serpent, Shower of Doubt. Shower of Doubt yep. was a fight where you used to go, oh, we need a priest, or a warlock, or a lot of dwarves. Like, yep. even though it's a master spell or die kind of situation, there are lots of different ways to solve it. Yep. Whereas in this season, when it comes to master spell, um, there are five dungeons where master spell is very potent. Uh, and I think three of the master spell or die mechanics are AoE dots that apply to everybody and require a master spell. They are Emberon. Um, oh, Emberon the Novas from the Drakes, and the AoE in Underrot, although there's caveats to the Underrot one as to whether you actually need it or not, but it is boss. very, very, very important on the last boss. Yeah. When you when Titan Keeper Hezreal goes off to do his thing, you stop getting the cleansing circles, so you might go up to three stacks, and if that happens, it's MD or die yeah. in the high keys. Um, so yes, and that and has I been actually a... would say that even adi in addition to that, the keys where it's not like super required, it's still useful. Like in almost every key, I think there's like, yeah, mass is good. Uh, you know, it's fi there's fi uh, there are five that I would argue are like key level dependent mandatory, and then Naltharis does nothing. Okay, Naltharis. Okay, Naltharis. There are some elementals that you can just whatever. Off. There's yeah. also a few debuffs that can go out in the group if you just miss kicks, for example. They don't happen yeah. in high keys because if you True. miss a the kick, they normally kill you in one tick. Yeah, but yeah like on let's say a twenty. You can master spell, I think it's Motes of Combustion from memory? That sounds right. Oh yes, oh yeah, yeah. Motes of Combustion from like the guys upstairs, yeah, there's yeah. that. Yeah, normally these don't um, let cars go through, but... Yeah. That's fair. Very you, nice can use it. you can use it as a safety measure in lower keys, yes. But it is the dungeon where I would willingly like drop master spell and feel okay about it. Yeah. It's also um, the one dungeon where you don't need the Mind Soothe, because they're all giants. Yes. That is Shadow's worst dungeon. Yes, it is. It is Shadow's worst. It is Shadow's worst dungeon in terms of... Um, Utility, but utility. it's like Shadow, it's like Shadow's legitimately best dungeon in terms of damage pattern, though. I think. Like it's every single good. pull is one. Every single pull is like one massive thing and a couple of really small things. I think like pull cadence naturally, almost in a lot of key levels, just feels good for our cooldowns. Is what you're saying, right? It, uh, no, I'm saying like our damage pattern of like we do a lot of damage Watch to prior. one thing, and oh, we're very high. Sure. Pri we're a very high prio, and like this is a dungeon with like multiple mini bosses, yeah, true. multiple large dangerous mobs. Um, the packs where we don't have our cooldowns are the chain packs anyway. Mm, like yeah, yeah. you you use like you use your CDs, then you chain, and yeah. then you use your CDs and then you chain. So like yeah. we don't really have cooldown downtime. Um, it's just a really good dungeon for us, especially with how you pull Magma Tusk in nowadays, because like you literally just like drag the entire previous two packs on top of him and then burn <laughs> him down. So Shadow is really really good at that. Uh, besides that, then we've got Notharian's Lair, which just genuinely just have zero places for Master Spell, and two very, very good Mind Soothe spots as well. And then we also have uh, Freehold, which has nowhere for, which has Master Spell if you mess up on the first boss, but I generally don't yeah, take it. Kind of and Master Tank. Spell if you and if you fail to take a Frost Blast, you put AoE slow on everybody, which you can Master Spell off, but also that's just going to kill you on high key levels. It can remove a tank, the the healing reduction. Well, the it healing can, yes, at it's the well, end. like. Yeah, that's mm. useful as well, but like realistically, your healer should be on top of that, and there shouldn't, you never pull two um, of those things at the same time. Often, so. it's gone wrong in bug keys, where let's say you have the other affix out that gives the healer dispel, and it's dispelled, and you can't yeah, yeah. spell the tank, stuff like that. It's 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 not, like you said, it's not, not make or break normally, but it's nice. 
yeah yeah exactly like i think um even in the keys where my spell master spell isn't like you can't put a concrete reason of like you need this for this it's still just very good generally this season like again going from like two to three useful spots and maybe one mandatory spot to four to five mandatory spots and it's useful every in every single key like these dungeons are very 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 well suited for shadow right now <laughs> and that we've only covered two spells by the way this is <laughs> you know this is just that's just I mean, my genuine, suited mask, I, right? genuinely that is the entirety of shadow priest utility here in these well dungeons. but the thing you didn't mention too is that it's also the affixes as well right Okay, affixes, the affixes as well is ridiculous. Shadow has the ability to mitigate bursting, mitigate afflicted. Um, we have two crowd controls for... We have Okay, we have two 30-yard range crowd controls for... Um, incorporeal. Incorporeal. Yep. And we are the only spec to have two 30-yard range crowd controls for incorporeal. Everyone okay, else Warlock? has... Uh, oh, Warlock has... Okay, Warlock has... Karen Banish. Yep. Fear and Banish for Warlock, okay. Paladin has Turn Evil and Repentance, but Turn Evil has a 15-yard range. And Hunters have Trap and Scare Beast, but I believe Scare Beast has a 15-yard range. I may yep. be wrong on that, and Hunters might be in the same uh, club with us as well. I but played um, a while. Yeah, but like, Shadow has really, really good utility for these affixes. Like, incredible utility for these affixes. Which you is can, so interesting, right? Because I think, and we've been sitting on this podcast saying like, We've been asking for, and it's in feedback posts that we've said of like we need, we like more utility for dungeons, right? Like we've been the asking. Thing is, for like we haven't. The thing is, we haven't, we haven't gained more utility. I know. Blizz yeah. just, Blizz just like decided to pit. Like the thing that's really awkward about Shadow is the utility we have is both incredibly niche and incredibly poorly spread out across the rest of the classes. So if yeah. Shadow's utility is good, only shadow or like priest in general's utility is good right. so when blizzard sort of the way i like to phrase this is like questions and answers so mechanics in dungeons are posing questions to mm -hmm. your raid team or your group and realistically a lot of these things only really have one answer to them and that is master spell or mind soothe yep. those sort of one answer like questions that only have one answer are really really bad for the game in general regardless of whether that answer is a priest ability or a mage ability or a shaman ability or a druid ability or a hunter ability or what i really in really dislike right? in dungeon yeah in dungeons specifically where when they ask questions that only have one answer yeah. and a lot of these dungeons are asking the same questions over and over again there is a very little variant in what utility is good in these keys and the utility that is good is priests and priests alone it's a very strange situation so yeah and, not really and, been I, before, and i do and want I've... to note that it is also priest utility right like nothing yes, we've like... said has anything to do with shadow priest whatsoever right no i will not I'll... actually have anything we don't add like shadow priest does not add anything to the utility that is required i will, uh, I will priest is just I... the same yeah. I will re I will rebuke that actually, really? uh, uh, because of the way that damage intake patterns in season two's dungeons works, vampiric embrace overheals so much less in these keys, because we've gone from a world where the damage in keys is either nothing or one shots, mm -hmm. so people either go from hundred to zero and die, or they don't take any damage really at all from trash, whereas now we have lots of like trash pulls where where certain mobs in them are doing constant aoe or they have like mechanics they do that deal raid aoe um there's just a lot more constant damage going off so the odds vampiric embrace overheals are much much lower they also nerfed it and three times yes they have nerfed it they, well they've nerfed <laughs> it four times including the including the actual change they made going into the season where site healing doesn't work on it yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah true. so yeah that's fun Yes, but, but, like, I, but it's like, just been such an interesting thing, right? Like it, it's I don't want to say it's coincidence, right? But we just we hit some middle ground this season where it's like all the keys, we did, the we affixes. Did not, we did not hit. This is not a middle ground. Sorry, I didn't mean middle. I meant like uh, yeah, we, is, we hit the other end of the spectrum. This is the other way to say it. Because like previously, we haven't had like the only use for priest utility was like you have power infusion yeah. and then you can mass dispel bursting, and that was kind of it. Um, we didn't really use Shackle Undead hardly ever. Most dungeons weren't even, like, undead anyways. Um, no. I think Karazhan, I don't remember. It's been a while. But, like, you know, and again, same thing. Shadow-specific utility. Not that we can really talent into it because it's so hard to get. Like, Psychic Horror, Silence are both pretty just unused, terrible spells, right? 
So we eh. kind of just hit this. Oh, this is fine. Well, if you can, if you take it. I mean, do people take silence these days? Yes. Oh, that's um, weird. <laughs> I haven't had that spell in years. It's used. People don't say last word. Last word's impossible to get. Last word's hard to get. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's hard because like when when we're talking about shadow and mythic plus, I think it's still relevant to say like. I do still think, sh like, I want there to be a reason, especially from, like, a, a weekly key perspective or, like, you're trying to pug of saying, yeah, there's value in adding another priest here if you already have one. Although... I don't think there's... I would say that's a bit of a slippery slope to go down. I'm not particularly yeah. a fan of that. What I would also say is that while we've kind of made the comment of Shadow has been in two extremes, where mm -hmm. utility is incredibly useful and utility is incredibly, um, like, ridiculously, like, like niche and not very niche, relevant. Yeah. I want to I want to make the point that what we're not arguing for here is a middle ground because I would say the middle ground is legitimately as toxic as is is still just toxic to the mythic plus ecosystem in the same way that the higher extreme is regardless because it's still a lot of a lot of the same question being asked and only one answer. I don't yeah. think that master spell should ever be in a position where it is master spell or die. And yeah, I think, I think a lot of people problem. would agree. I guess let me. We'll, yeah, we'll go to Sailor first. I think like my thoughts have always been, if there's two answers to those questions, that feels better, right? Like we talked about the I mind two is, thing, right? Two but, is still too two is still too low for a do X thing or die. Sure, sure. But like I think the mind soothe example is like a good one, right? Like if mind soothe shroud or mass invis worked. That would feel fun. If, if yeah, if Mind Soothe Shroud and Mass Invis all worked, you can make the argument that you've just given you've just listed the three trust fund specs. Um Yeah. So maybe it's not as good. Maybe something like like I, you, okay, okay, Warrior makes no sense. You can't you can't you can't <laughs> but they're, terrify they're, some they terrify them. mobs. You can't terrify mobs into not looking at you. That doesn't work. Um <laughs> <Why not? laughs> But like like it's just like it's like a like an orc rogue with max intimidation just yells, "You did not see me!" and everyone's so scared that they just go, "Yes, okay, we didn't." Like you can't do that really. But um, like other specs need these things. I don't think saying, "Oh, we gave mass spell to mage, rogue, and priest," like that's yeah. gonna go over well. It's like I get that they're the specs that canonically make the most sense to be able to dodge mobs, but like they've been having it pretty good already. <laughs> that's fair. So, other thoughts on this? I know you've kind of been hitting. I mean, this is also a similar question, I think, with Evoker in a lot of ways, but what are your thoughts in general about, like, how they balance this utility out, or thoughts on that? I I don't like there being one option like Ellipsis. I, one option is incredibly toxic because, well, you have to bring it. Yeah. Alternatively, you have to do something completely deranged to work out how to not need it instead. Like, yeah. like for example, the, the dragons in Halls of Infusion, if you pulled them, which you currently don't, but like they they have a master spell or die. Yep. If you didn't have to master spell or die, you'd need to solve that dot some other method, like dwarfing them all. So you'd have to have an entire group of dwarfs. You'd have to that you'd have to go to such a, an insane length to otherwise accomplish the same thing that master spell provides. And that's why that sort of thing is often bad. It, it can be okay if the alternative isn't awful. The example there being like you mentioned pulling mobs to the side. It's worse. But in some places, it's it's fine. Those dragons in Halls of Infusion aren't fine if you do that with, because they can no. just cast it and kill you. Like, it yes. can go wrong. Um, I, I, I want to point out that the, the spec that is, like, the, the class that is closest to be able to do that consistently is actually Hunter. Because Hunter yeah. can do it. Hunter can do it with Disengage and Feign Death and landing on, like, a uh, ledge that you're not supposed to, that, like, doesn't give pathing. And it, like, makes all the mobs stop hitting you immediately and just immediately re resets them all. And, like, you can use that to get around there. Like, I, the other thing is, the, Minesuit currently is just better than Mass Invis. Yeah. And yes. it's just better than Stealth and a lot of these keys. They seem to have forgotten that there should be a little bit of either variance in packs. So there should, like, be a beast. In in Brackenhide, there's beasts patrolling in the latter half of the instance, which stops you from just Minesuiting and walking past. Yep. And... This is a way to... Well, unfortunately, it makes Minesuit useless because you actually just can't Minesuit skip it. But this stops you from being able to just use Minesuit as the answer to everything. If a key had a couple of good Minesuits, that would be yes. fine. In the same way, there's a couple of good Shrouds in every key because not every pack has eyes. Yeah. Like, yes, and also Shroud a Shroud has a downside. much longer or, or there should be something that does the same thing exactly. 
more or less. Or they nerfed the yeah. mechanic to begin with, right? Like if they just nerfed yeah. the dragon's ability and made that pack more desirable to mm. pull, right? Like that. that would yeah, the, 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 like, like the pack is like the pack is ridiculously efficient. It's just terrifying. Yeah. And it, and, yeah. It, and, it, and, it, and it's followed by the hardest HPS check boss in the game. So your healers <laughs> don't use cooldowns on it. Yeah. True. Yeah. I... I, I, those dragons, ideally, they just like they lower the initial hit by half. They they make it so you don't have to dispel them at all and lower the dot damage or something like that. So they just they're hard. They, they're a healing check, but they aren't they aren't just you've wiped if you pulled them by accident. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So even okay, if you pull so... those with a priest, it's nearly a wipe right now. So we've kind of gone through all the utility now, at least. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it has taken a while. It's a lot though. Uh, I, I think it's, it's relevant, I, and I guess like to me, where that leads us is why are they nerfing Shadow Priest, right? They're nerfing lots of things um, in the god comp, and they've nerfed, was it, they've nerfed Shadow twice now, and they've nerfed, like, Holy yep. Paladin, and yep. Mage got hit a lot. Um, Bears um, got tickled a little bit, I think. Um, <laughs> Bears, did, uh, Bears got poked, yeah, like, not very much. <laughs> um, right, so, Ellipsis, like, wh why is why is Shadow Priest getting nerfed? And it, I mean, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, Shadow's damage was still just ludicrous. Like the, on the first nerf and the second nerf, Shadow's damage was still just too high. Genuinely, the third nerf is where we can talk about whether this was necessary or not. But the first sure. two, completely fine, completely fine. Now, when anybody you say complaining completely about fine? Nerfs? Are you talking specifically in the context of God comp? Because obviously, augmentation no. evoker is new with this season, which I think we can get to that in a second as well. But you're saying just even without that, like people just doing their weekly stuff. Yeah, even without that, people doing their weekly stuff. I will say that Shadow benefits, like, people say, like, oh, Shadow benefits from Org, benefits from da da da. It, it does to an extent, but, like, in terms of where the difference comes from between people doing their 17s and people doing their 20s, or people and people doing their 26s or whatever, yeah. like, the difference is genuinely much more on gameplay than it is on, like, pull sizes or time to kill or anything, like, you, you could, like I've been doing like 15, 16s today for uh, like 16, 17s today for my uh, vault because it's there's faster. no point doing keys. There's no, there's no point doing keys this week because of the nerfs that are coming. Yep. And I was still just doing like very, very good damage, com like alongside people with comparable eye level in pulls that are much, much shorter, much, much smaller. The damage is still there for Shadow like, even now. Like you, you're still comfortable and consistent. Like it's nowhere like near to the level that you see in 27s and it's nowhere near the level we're seeing currently in the MDR in the TGP but it is still fine hmm. I've got a point about that specifically on the lower keys Shoot. the lower the, the lower the pull length is the more important that it, that you make the correct decision on every single global yes. for every single global yes on a 17 or a 16 your pack is probably dead in 10 to 15 seconds yes. if you've had to move to dodge something if you if you were out of position to start the pull or if you just fumble and say you cast a vampiric touch instead of a mind spike insanity, the damage loss compared to a forty plus second pull is gigantic. Yes, your globals matter more because mm. there's less of them. Like mm. yeah. Um so being like having more having more and more efficiency in um like lower keys is like genuinely just a much bigger difference than people like give it credit for. And it's probably a big reason for a lot of the backlash against the nerfs to Shadow. Because Shadow in Mythic Plus is really, like, it looks brain dead simple to play. <laughs> and to get it to like 65% efficiency, it is. But to actually eke everything out of it is an obscene amount of, um, like, micro optimization. Like, genuinely well, ridiculous. But I, I don't want to, you know, completely leave out. I think where I, a lot of people where I think were upset was, especially with this, specifically the last round of hotfixes that Shadow got, yes. was because it nerfed single target. And that... Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, kind they of. did nerf single target. They did they nerf did. single target, yes. Um, I, w I would also, I would like to point out, though, that Shadow's single target is still higher than it was prior to the buff to single target we got. In raid? It is, is it? yeah. It's oh. still yeah. higher than that was, yes. We're still up 6 7,000 DPS. Yeah, oh, we're still up. Sure. Yeah, we're still up on the temp on when we got the ten percent buff to the Iron Plague and all the single target spells and the and the big nerf to Psychic Link. We're still I was just wondering, that. like relatively though. Yes, you're right. Yes, but if you go look at statistics for Rashok or Magmarax, it doesn't really look that much different than what it because was before. The thing is, everybody else got buffed too. Yeah, exactly. yeah that's, that's, doing... that's that's what I was getting at. Like, yeah, we did yeah, technically like... still gain damage at the end. Of, like, if you add them all together, but and that's um... another thing to go back to when you said like. 
uh, Shadow historically was very overpowered and deserved the first nerf. Yeah, the first nerf probably. But then and you also have to notice that they buffed every other spec at the same time in, in, in since yes. then. The, the difference became a lot smaller by the time of the yeah. second nerf. And the second nerf, yeah, probably still fair. But after that, every spec is pretty like pretty good now. Like for example, rogues were uh, rogues are one of the most like one of the most obvious ones. Rogues were underperforming significantly in raid, to say the least. Yeah. And they yeah. received pretty much generic generic aura buffs. So I don't know if anyone's done the cleave with a subtlety rogue recently. They slap. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. They slapped beforehand as well. They were one of the, they were they one of the specs that did like actual AOE damage in Brackenhide. Like they were genuinely yeah. still quite good. And they're, they're they're very good now. And then there's also like this thing like DPS Warrior are very good in keys. There's a lot of cards yeah. that are just very good in keys. But right now, damage isn't the be all and end all, which is abnormal. Normally, in the case of WoW, damage is the most important thing for keys. Historically, that's been the case in previous seasons of Mythic Plus as well. Yeah, I think this is the first time that there's been a season where utility is so mandatory that you can't do another way to like play a better class. And it yeah. does help that Shadow's damage profile is so suited to keys. I was going to say, I think it's... does lower damage, yeah. it's still better for time. It's yes. kind of like a three... I think there's three big reasons, right? Obviously, like yeah. you mentioned, the damage pattern, right? Like, Shadow being kind of the outlaw rogue of the ranged DPS, right? Where you're... No, it's it's not the outlaw kind of thing anymore. Because outlaw is, outlaw is indiscriminate AoE. This is prior damage. Prior damage is the huge thing. Right, but I, I mean... Outlaw still does... Outlaw still does like, that, right? Outlaw damage to one man, and then 50 to the rest. It's not quite okay. the same. It's, just, it's it's in the same the, the ballpark, right? The, dif the difference between uh, Outlaw's single target and Outlaw's AOE na damage numbers is just Blade Flurry's number. It's it's a 50% yes. difference. Yeah, Currently it's... for Shadow, the difference between our single our, our prior single target and our AOE is more like the monster that we're doing single target to is like three times, take, taking like three to plus times the damage rather than two plus yes. times damage. So we have it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's priority target damage. We have the utility. Um... And, oh crap, I forgot the last one. Oh, we got lucky, I guess. I don't know. Holy Priest and Dispriest no, you... are bad. Um, no. that's that's well, that's kind but... of part of it. But, like, <laughs> I guess the, the other thing we were going to say is, like, Org fixes a lot of Shadow's Oh, problems. yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That, it was it was where it, it where it fits into the God Comp, specifically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of, like, God Comp is not just the best damage comp. Or, like, it, was, or it wasn't just the best damage comp at the time. You can argue there are better damage comps at this point, actually, but, like, Realistically, that's still not going to be seen. Um, it is also just the comp with the most stuff. Yeah, so from, of... from an augmentation perspective, Sailor, what... I guess, can you kind of walk me through a little bit about, like, what is augmentation bringing to the group? And then also, what does that mean for Shadow Priest being better because of that? Right. So, everyone probably knows more or less what augmentation does, but I'll briefly cover it. Augmentation has several buffs for the group that increase the damage of group members. So they have an Even Might that provides primary stat. They have their Mastery, which gives you versatility, which is quite important. Mm -hmm. Ellie will have a comment about that later. And they also have um, Prescience, which gives you a, a small amount of crit chance and has a Fate Mirror proc attached to it. It's quite small now. It's been nerfed multiple times, but it, it's just a damage replication. So that's what they give to you, but that's the damage. What else? What they also give to you is they give you a pseudo fortificate fort buff with um, draconic achievements. This thing gets buffed by aspects favor to give you even more when they press their personal. They have all of the standard uh, standard evoker utility, and Which is wild. Oh, oh, evoker has a lot of utility. Yeah, some of it doesn't get used in every key, but they actually have a lot of key. They have a lot of stuff that very well suited the keys. Mm -hmm. They just haven't been meta. Like devastation wasn't particularly meta, so we haven't seen people making proper use of it until. Now augmentation is in every key, and people won't really want to live without some of that stuff now. Yeah. Yeah. Then, like, there's other interesting things like Wormstone, just rescue in general, and then augmentation is... It's as good as the other two classes in terms of the, like, damage it does. So when you bring two classes that have specific roles assigned, the augmentation just lets you do your role better. So yeah. there's no worry that they're going to do too much AOE damage or they're going to do too much single target damage and ruin a pull. They just make the other two players that are doing their jobs properly do their jobs better. I think I think the mobility so part is CC. crucial. Not not to yeah. skip on it too much. Like I think one of Shadow's weaknesses is movement and mobility, right? So I was about to get to it, but yeah. the other thing they do is they 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 have the CC 
I think mm. they have one of the highest number of stops in the game, if not the highest number of stops they in the have, game. They have three, and if you want to be really, really pedantic, you can argue that Breath of Eons can be four. Yeah, mm. it's absurd. And it's they have the same local they, rounds. They have, they have, at the minimum, the same number of Enhanced Shaman have. Mm. Now, now, we, the, now the big thing is ability. Things like Wormstone and Rescue and Ellie. Would you like to cover how broken that is in keys? <laughs> I would I would indeed like to cover how broken rescue is in keys. However, I would also like to clarify this with nobody doing keys below a 27 will ever find out how broken rescue is in keys. Because it is one of the major differences in damage output for Shadow Priest between these high key high key pushing teams and even your average even like not your average but like even like people pugging 27s or 26s, or like pugging for title keys, are not experiencing this. And it is that re Rescue is so incredibly impactful for Shadow's opening GCD sequence for a large pull that I would probably argue that it is in the ballpark of 200k on a given trash pack DPS, being given the right rescue setup and being able to actually get your globals off. Now, is because... that just because like you're you're trying to dot obviously like as the tank is pulling, you're trying to dot mobs, which everyone yes. in every key will have experience with. But I think what you're describing is like obviously in really high push keys, that's going to like a new extreme where you're like yes, you're running miles. Like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? the, so... yes, the first yes, the pack is not ending. The pack is not ending where it started. The pack is ending 150 yards from where yeah. it started. Yeah. You do not actually have the ability to stop and spam vampiric touch on things as the tank pulls because you also need to be running with the tank to wherever their destination is. Exactly. Yeah. Um what Evoker allows Shadow Priest to do is run into the heart of the pull and just stand still and mash a vampiric touch. This is something you can't do otherwise. You need yeah. rescue for this because rescue will then put you where you need to be at the end of the pull to actually hit the shadow crash and start doing all the damage with everybody else on on their side. You can, if you want good examples of this right now, um, Echo's team are currently bashing their heads against a 31 Brackenhide in the TGP. Obviously, if you if you're watching this later, the time you can go find the TGP footage and look at like them doing this. Um, Clix's setups for mirrors in the sec in the first and second areas of this key are giving him 200k DPS purple yeah. because he is able to just spam out that many more vampiric touches that when he goes into void form and starts void bolting to extend his dots, he's extending all of those regular vampiric touches and getting the eight dots from Shadow Crash. So realistically, he's dotting 15 to 16 mobs instead of most people's 8 to 10, maybe at best 11. Yeah. You are getting so many more Vampiric Touches out by playing with a consistent Augmentation Evoker and understanding where the pull is go. Everyone understanding exactly where the pull is going to end. It just makes such an enormous, enormous difference. Um, that is one thing for Augmentation, and it's why Shadow is... Kind of showing to in the really really high keys still just be gapping everything else whereas in the 25 even in 25 26 the shadows damage has taken a notable hit because they're not getting this consistent setup that the people are getting in these like crazy high keys yeah. the other thing that augmentation provides for shadow is a lot of passive survivability mm. shadow is yeah. despite shadow being one of the most tanky specs in the game in raids it's typically been kind of bad in dungeons because you don't have the ability to consistently survive individual things knocking you for a hundred percent of your health bar. Yeah, does bad. And for that one is shots. a lot. Yeah. yeah, we're bad. For, we were bad for one shots because we had disperse for one, prayer for another, and then you died. <laughs> what do you flash heal fade? Um, you know, pray. Yeah, yes, but <laughs> yes, but flash heal. Well, yeah, but flash heal fade wasn't even in the game in Shadowlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. had oh, fade. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And BFA before that, you had fade, but fade was for magic damage. Oh, and the fade in Shadowlands was four seconds or something. Yeah, but it was also six, it was also sixteen percent, not ten. Very other sure. big aspect to that, Ellie, that you're yep. also like not missing there is 
that's just talking about the active mitigation that you can press when you know damage is incoming. We were yes. extremely bad at random damage. If you were just going to yes. get hit, mm -hmm. not even for 100% of your health, but if it was like 70, 80, 90, there's a lot yeah. of pulls, I think, this expansion where that happens to you fairly regularly. I think uh, yes. Notharis is one of them with all the casters. You have yes. 0.5 seconds or whatever it is to react to the cast hitting you. Not or really like enough the, time. Or like the leaps from the hunters. Shadow mm. is just really, real. Shadow just has very little passive mitigation. Like, rolling passive mitigation and it's made even worse by the fact that versatility is so excruciatingly bad for us because mastery haste and crit are so good yeah that means like so yeah and now we now we're playing in specifically this is god comp as well so this is not we're not just getting the passive health from the augment we're getting devotion aura and we're getting yep. the druids mark of the wild for another 1.5 dr in versatility yes and, and that's just are... passive all the time and yes. then there's the mastery from the augment that is yes. up about a third to a half of the time passively, and that's 20% versatility, which is not a 10% DR. But that will yes. be up on every single pull at the start of the pull, which is very, very crucial yeah. for... When you when you don't play as cleanly as these TGP runs are, for example, those mm. mobs are a bit chaotic, to say the least, as they're getting into the pack, and you yeah. can take excessive amounts of damage. Having that extra health there, the survivability, makes a yep. world of difference. And that will carry on for the first opening part of the pull, especially like if you have Vampiric Embrace running on the start of those pulls, which you do. You, you, you stack all the CDs, you have Vampiric Embrace running and you have all this versatility. You aren't going to get one shot because you actually have tankiness now and you can just heal it back. Yes, like Shadow is um, like, it's like if you think, if you think back to uh, BFA, and how much versatility BM hunters were able to run in Mythic Plus, mm, yep. and then think about how Shadow was like getting one shot by random stuff in the same level keys because we had like five, like two or three percent verse, and hunters had like thirty-two. Uh, Demon hunters the same, like, like the passive mitigation provided by being able to run excessive amounts of versatility was like invaluable, and the same thing we're seeing now. But Shadow still can't run that versatility; it has to get it from other places, and it gets it from the massive amounts of mitigation that this comp provides which also means that uh fire mage in this comp which is currently stacking versatility is just functionally immortal <laughs> yeah you can't die cannot die as a fire mage so yeah so you you're, you're basically well. just shoring up a lot of these big weaknesses that people are going to see with shadow as a spec that is very susceptible to like one shot mechanics and stuff like that but yes. i do also don't want to shy over there's also a pretty big I think from a damage output perspective, I think the synergy that Augmentation, Shadow, and Mage have in like together as a group is also pretty insane too. Yeah, yeah, true. With blessing and stuff, but Yes. Um Yeah, I mean, Sailor, any any notes you have on like just the potency of like from a damage output perspective, obviously stacking it's, power infusion with all that stuff on the mage is it's nothing actually to shy away from. less than people think. It's a lot less than people think. Right, Fire Mage does not actually gain that much from the power infusion. It's quite good. It's Ooh, upper middle of the that. specs. It's 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 very good. It's it's upper I mean, middle of specs. It's, true. It's, it's, like, it's a very good buff, but it's not the same as specs that have the truly absurd levels of burst. Hmm. We don't really see those in Mythic Plus, so this this is slightly different in Rage and just on single target. But Fire Mage is actually somewhat more of a consistent DPS with its current iteration. And that just means power infusion is less good than it has been historically for them. Hmm. Yeah, like, don't we're, no, we're not we're really not in good. the rune like of seven eight percent DPS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're not in the rune of power era where power infusion True. was like giving them the CDR to chain their cooldowns properly to be able to do active damage. It's kind of just more of what they already have now. It's not like enabling anything. Yeah. It's still really, really, really good. I don't want to undersell it, but <laughs> no. people people think back to the Halcyon days where it was like eleven percent on a fire mage. No, it's like six. A bit more on AoE, yeah. probably, because this boss is just better on AoE, but... Yes. It's... That that means it's... It does increase the power of Breath of Eons. You, you are going to cast mm. more spells inside Breath of Eons. But Breath of Eons has been nerfed. Breath of Eons is now 10% cooldown. It's 12% in keys. It's very good. It's a damage amplifier. But... It's... The whole synergy thing isn't as pronounced as it used to be. There are some <laughs> other synergy things, like the Mage, Arcane Intellect, Double Dips with Even Might. Some people might not know this. So every single mm. intellect DPS gains an extra 0.6% DPS, roughly, from Huge. having a mage from the even might, compared to not having a mage with the even might. That's also just ignoring the fact that 
Arcane Intellect buffs the input number as well. That's just an extra 0.6 from it buffing the output number. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well which, also mean, number. which also means uh, Arcane Intellect buffs everyone now. Hmm. Arcane Intellect will also be there for, because it buffs the input, it actually buffs the amount of primary stat on your tank. Funnily yes. enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, it's incredible. And the fact that you can just put every single cooldown into Breath of the Eons at one time is really nice, especially for these ludicrously large pulls where you get to focus so much damage within like a short time to lower the number of monsters down to a more controllable number. But it isn't Shadow and it isn't Power Infusion doing that per se. That's just yeah. DPS classes with the current design of most DPS yes. classes. That's just these are the specs that do the most numbers already, and augmentation is the spec that makes numbers go higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. PI, the PI is just. The icing on the cake, and then the blessing of summer is the cherry on top. Yes. It's a bit rotten now, half eaten, but... <laughs> yeah, it's still good. Still okay, good. So, to put a pin in Mythic Plus, then, I think, and we'll go to Ellipsis first on this. So, from, like, a where we want to go from here thing, I think we've talked a lot about how, like, Shadow does do good damage, yes, but it's also a big part of why they're so valuable is their utility, right? So, going yes. forward, Ellipsis, final thoughts on kind of what we've seen so far in season two and what we'll continue to see or into if, season three. If Blizzard wants to keep using the same style of mechanics they've been using in season two, something else or maybe multiple somethings need to have the ability to do what Master Spell does. If Blizzard want Master Spell or like things that should be Master Spell to be part of Mythic Plus more generally now, then it's got to stop being just priests. It's which is kind of sad because like obviously it's always been our like niche as a priest is like we have master spell but the trade-off for that is that it's never been good consistently because it can't be this is this is what happens when it is and this yep. isn't sustainable yeah um the other thing i would say is that i do not think that mind soothe should work on mobs with i i think that is just dumb mm. and yep. a little bit of an oversight and I think that Blizzard needs to be a lot more careful about what mob types they put in their dungeons, especially on packs they feel like probably should be played or will end up being massive time saves. Um, the giant discrepancy between... Or the discrepancy between mobs being giants in Nalfaris is a very big point here. Um, there are also like packs with beasts in them in Naltharian's Lair, but then they're not packs you want to skip, and the packs you want to skip are all yeah. humanoids. Yeah. And then there's also the op. There would also have been the option for the dungeon filled with primalists to have elementals in it, but it doesn't. It just has humanoids and dragons, so you can skip everything pretty much. Like they need to be more clever with mob types for sure. And uh, as far as Shadow specifically, I think. A lot of what makes Shadow very, very strong right now, besides the utility, is stuff that is reasonably acceptably okay to be things that Shadow can do long term. A lot of Shadow's weaknesses still exist and are still prevalent. They're just stored up by the fact augmentation is so incredibly good in Mini Plus. Yeah, for sure. All right, Sailor, any closing thoughts on? Shadow Mythic Plus, Utility Funness, God Comp I, I think Ellie pretty much touched everything, but there's another thing I would like to touch on briefly. That we'll, I think we might make, make it later, but I don't know if we have time. <laughs> but with the last nerf to Psychic Link, we no longer offer burst damage. Oh yeah, we have none. Literally none. Which <laughs> was historically a weakness that Shadow had, and historically a problem that we didn't that we didn't that we decided was problematic. Yeah. However, yes. at the same time. If Shadow needs a weakness with its damage pattern being as potent as it is for keys, not having burst AoE is probably one of the most reasonable ones. It's just it's, unfortunate from I, a raiding perspective. I mostly. think the thing is, like, we've asked for burst AoE for so long, and, like, it's been a thing that was like, you can't just have specs that don't have burst AoE in this game, because it's so much yeah. worse for all the people who are not playing at the bleeding edge. For because Shadow yeah. not having burst AoE is, like, a genuine issue in lower keys. Like as yeah. I, I I mentioned that you can still pump the numbers, but like you you feel it so much less. It's like a really big difference. If we um, still have the the psychic link doing the, the void torrent, you'd have a lot less difference between somebody that did a couple of fumbles and somebody that didn't because the void torrent was just such a, such a large portion. Yes, void, we void torrent. Yeah, void torrent having gone from like 
35 was it 30 originally or was it 60 it was about was 25 30 percent of our it was yeah, damage yeah. in the burst yeah. scenario that is it was yeah like, like they have nerfed psychic links contribution from void torrent so much now that shadows burst on burst in aoe is basically just its single target damage <laughs> yeah like yeah. actually yeah and it's also like it does also mean void torrent is just less valuable like it's almost like there was a bit of gaming i think where it's like it felt good to get a good optimized void torrent out but now it's like well it's fine yeah <laughs> hitting hitting the hitting, hitting the big target more consistently is just a priority now like you don't yeah. actually gain a massive amount from psychic linking void torrent right yeah yeah and another thing is in all these patches that balance changes they did recently they didn't touch void torrent they nerfed no. like link down and they buffed every other spell on like link they didn't yeah the relative val the relative value of torrent has been going down which also again i think is a very good thing because as a single talent point void torrent was ludicrously ex ludicrously mm -hmm. powerful for a single talent and it's probably the thing that i want them to or the was the thing at the time i wanted them to not hit but like lessen the relative value of for sure, especially after they had the ability for it to spawn tentacles because that's a fantastic thing. I love that. And I do not yeah. want that to go away. Yeah, I, I don't um, mind. I don't mind this talent being that good. Maybe it should be more central if it is this good. We could make it more hmm. obvious that you should probably have this button yeah. almost always. Like if it was in the direct middle and you, you kind of clicked void torrent and led off to other things, maybe. Yeah. But it's on the side, and therefore you have to go that way if you know what I mean. Yeah, you have to go through the mind spike route, for example. And some people yes. you know, want to play Mind Spike. That's a different like story, but you kind of forced through that route right now to pick up the Void Torrent because it's that good. Yes. So, yeah, I see. I see what you mean, Ellie. But I don't want it to go, and I'd rather they yeah. shuffled it around to keep it I'm, around, yeah, even if I'm it stays very, this good. Like honestly, I'm very happy with where it is in power level right now. Yeah. My issue is burst AOE just can't really stay this bad. It can still be bad, definitely. Yeah. It can still like not be our strength. It's just like. It's really, really not our strength right now. Yeah, and I think my my two cents, honestly, the last thing I'd like to bring up is just the way that they've been balancing Shadow and like these hot fixes is just super frustrating and volatile to me. And that's where it's like, and I'll tease a little bit because I do think if the only way to kind of hot fix and and move our kit around is to like specifically nerf one off spells, like we recently saw them just chunk out Shadowy Apparition damage. <laughs> You know, like if that's their only answer to this, they can only bring Psychic Link down so much before it's already kind of getting into that territory of like, what is this spell? Um, I do think that's where we need some extra levers in our kit so we can move damage around and not hemorrhage single target or whatever it is, right? Yeah, like so. uh, like I want to point out with the apparition nerfs. Like when we lose our tier set, apparitions are going to be doing nothing. Yeah, and like well, you're already Absolutely starting not. to see <laughs> like, and we'll talk about this in a second with like raid stuff, but like we're already seeing a shift away from shadowy apparition damage like yog surround is kind of falling out tormented spirits is falling out even shadowy apparitions you know what i mean like and all that stuff is so that, yeah. that whole the whole row in our talent tree is about to get even emptier next year if they, they don't see something so yeah uh, exactly um okay so that we're going to kind of put a pin in mythic plus and kind of dive into this but it does feel it's very interesting where we came into dragonflight and they were like what if you could build your own Shadow Priest? You could have a, a Mind Flay Void Form build or a Mind Spike Dark Ascension build. And, uh, well, um, they haven't quite done it, but they've certainly done something. Um, with something all these changes it, yes. and all these hot fixes, and we, we noted earlier they've been doing... I don't know what, what's really changed other than, I think, Shadow's kit, but we've gotten, I think, no changes to Shadow Priest's aura since the launch of the expansion that I can remember off the top of my head. No, they've just been smashing random buttons with Just, things. like, surgically, like, moving damage numbers around to various things, which is, like... Yes. It's very dangerous and very um, prone to changing. I think... And I've been running talent builds, I and mean, currently, which is kind of interesting, our talents are all so insignificant that they're all getting used, besides Unfurling Darkness now. Um, I don't know if anyone's actually looked at the talent tree and, like, looked at viable builds, but... There's something with every single point on the tree now, except for Unfurling Darkness in PvE. Um, and Last Word. <laughs> last Word, yeah. Um, and a lot of this gets so, I think, frustrating for people because every time they, hot, they do hot fixes, they're like, oh, 10% off Shadow or Death, or 10% or increase to Shadow or Death, or they nerfed Apparitions, they nerfed Dot Damage. Instead of Definitely. touching the Spec Aura, 
all of our builds go kind of haywire for a little bit, um, which has caused some ruffles. And I think people, I, I'm, I'm sure I will continue to get questions of like, uh, why are people not using the latest builds that you have on icy veins on all these, on all these logs or whatever. And it's like, well, one, it's changing so often that I wouldn't expect people to keep up with how fast it is. A lot of people are like, they get a build and they use it for the rest of the season kind of a thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, we've seen quite a lot of shifts. So we'll just kind of talk about what the hotfixes have done recently. Because I know this has kind of come up a lot, especially in the Discord. Um, uh, let's talk about Dark Ascension. Um, so we came we came into Season 2 pretty much void form just dominating across the board, right? Um, it was best in single target, best in keys for sure. Um, and Dark Ascension was kind of a thought that we had. I know like Jarv and I were talking before the, the, the raid came out and we were like, okay, maybe you play Dark Ascension on like Skarn or something because it'll line up cool with like better with the ads. But in practice, we were just like void form all of the time. Um, but since then, they've nerfed Yogg-Saron, they've nerfed Shadowy Apparitions, and they've just kind of done targeted changes that have made void form specifically worse compared to Dark Ascension. Um... So yeah, I'll, and I'll, I'll toss to Sailor first because he was some of the mad scientists behind some of these changes at least. But yeah, we've seen a lot more, I think, we're not necessarily seeing Void from as being like dead, but builds are moving towards Dark Ascension, especially from like a day-to-day -day Shadow Priest player. Um, so yeah, Sailor, and I know you, you were just kind of playing it in raids, but how, how has Dark Ascension been feeling for you? thoughts on the build in general from like a rating perspective there's a lot of this is a pretty big topic so i'm gonna try and like go through in like several pieces there's the whole dark attention versus void form playstyle thing which ellie will want to comment on in a minute when i'm done with this so i'm going to leave it mainly for ellie to comment on because i think he's going to have something big to say about it because he, he's got some beef there but with shadow flame prism specifically or well it's in this case we're talking now to say it. it's it plays a lot differently to previous iterations of the same ability in the past, whenever it was active and your mind bender was out, your rotational priority changed dramatically, like very drastically even. You did absolutely everything possible to extend the mind bender as long as possible, but with the nerf they re it received coming into 10.1, because we had that previous mind bender tier set, if anyone remembers, yep. they, re they nerfed it significantly at that time, and they brought the Shadow Flame Prism's power level down to a more reasonable amount, which means you no longer have to change your playstyle when it's out. Slight, there's, there's some slight things it does with some priority changes and it, it does shift the value of some of certain talents but for the most part it doesn't actually make you have to play any differently it's just a passive effect that you gain when it's out and it's quite good it has a lot of, a lot of damage and it adds a lot of resource generation and it's like so that's like one thing the, the things it does change though is it lets you play things that more augment death because yep. the main thing it does is it brings death up to dps neutral with your empowered spells Empowered spells in this case meaning Mind Spike Insanity, uh, just Mind Blast in general, realistically. Like, those I would call an empowered spell rather than a non-empowered spell just being a baseline Mind Spike or, or a, a Halo, for example, somewhat, or, or, or a um, Divine Star. Those are the unempowered spells. They, they, don't, they don't want to press those. Shadow currently operates with the whole idea of you don't press a non-empowered spell if you can avoid it. You, you want to have, like, high priority damage. And what that does is it adds another button to your kit. And because it doesn't quite beat everything right now, this is just a miracle of tuning. Um, if, it, if it did yeah. beat things, uh, your rotation would be negatively impacted for most players. But because it doesn't, the way that you play it right now in raid is you can just sit on death. You you have it active, the mind is active. And previously, you'd have to press death immediately because otherwise you wouldn't get two deaths in the mind bender. Now you ignore death. You don't protect, you just don't care. Yep. You press it when either you run out of buttons to press that were already better, like Mind Spike Insanity, Mind Games, that kind of thing, or you press it because you had to move. This goes a really, really, really long way in fixing the movement problems that you get from playing Dark Ascension versus Void Form. Void Form gives you a Void Bolt every four, every four labels for the entire duration of Void Form. That's 40 seconds, 50 seconds, depending on how lucky you are. Whereas Dark Ascension does the same thing, but with death, and slightly longer. It's 10 second cooldown, but it's, it, it's, it lasts for 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. 
that's how, how long you get. So you get an increase in the movement for all, all of that duration. And because you're able to play Death Talent, you can now play Death Speaker, yeah. which is two and a bit procs per minute hasted. So three. So you get three Death Speakers a minute, roughly. And using those, you get a bit more mobility. And then because you're playing Distorted Reality as well, this is a new change. You're no longer playing Mind's Eye with Devari with a... Uh, a lot mm, of things, but Dark Ascension brain. specifically. <laughs> Dark Ascension, Dark Ascension yeah. specifically. Um, you're no longer playing that. So you now have a different way that you play the resource game as well, so that you press the varying plague and then you just sit. You have a lot of resources in your, in your pool and you, you aren't in any rush or hurry to press another devouring plague because it will not drop off the boss. It just won't. You're going to generate more resources in its duration than it costs to spend a devouring plague and therefore you can then choose more precisely exactly when you wish to use a devouring plague to do a movement mechanic yeah yes you do have less cast of devouring plague so therefore as an overall standpoint the amount of mobility that you have is lower but the movement you have it when you need it rather than just generally what this result is you can't hold especially void when void i tested it for the saying, first right? time yeah you, you can't hold void but you can't you can't hold devouring plague really with mind's eye unless yep. you're in cooldowns. you gotta send it when so, you have to send it you gotta send it when you have to send it but with the sort of reality you, you can just hold it because it's not an important thing to press. Therefore, sorry, that's, that's a lie. It is a very important spell to press. Please press the writing plate. But yeah. it's not important to press it as soon as you can press it or there thereabouts. You don't have like a one second window where it's like you yeah. have to press the varying plague here with like what you do with Mind's Eye, right? Yeah. So all of this actually gives both builds from what, what it felt like tonight for me. Very similar mobility. This was the first time I've properly played it in Raid, because I have been Augmentation Jail for the last several months, and before that I wasn't really playing the game seriously. But tonight, it felt fine. It's Next fine. week I'm going to try it again and get better at practice at it. But it, it feels fine. However, the big thing in all of this is... I, I didn't really mention Dark Ascension. That's because Dark Ascension doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> yeah, you play it's, the same. <laughs> you play the same. You're playing Priest. Yeah. And you're just playing. It, it's it's a, just it's, you press it and it does a thing. It, the best thing about it is that it gives you thirty insanity. Like that's the best thing about it. Yep. <laughs> I mean, from a playstyle perspective, crazy. obviously yeah. it it is actually a cooldown that buffs our spells in single target, which is it's nice a, to it's see. It's a pretty big buff. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah. But like all this ends up resulting in is there's kind of two different playstyles. So. Mm -hmm. With the Void Form playstyle, you have the cooldown playstyle where you have a cadence, where you do the thing, and there's like not quite fixed rotational like style, but you want to press the high, very high, very high powered buttons at the right times always, and you kind of have this block of time when you, you where you have like a sequence that just that's that sequence. Yep. Whereas when you're playing with uh, Dark, Dark Ascension, because you don't have this forced cadence, you're now playing like a somewhat more traditional reactionary proc spec where yeah. you just hit buttons. This has the downside of when you don't get procs, you're just hitting Mind Spike, the baseline one, and it does feel a bit iffy for some play, but with it. But yeah. I think this is where I should throw it back to Ellie, because this is what he was trying to get to earlier. That difference in play style of that proc-based play style to that void form cadence style that, that, that people know and love from playing Legion and playing BFA, that was so impactful. This whole proc and just rotational style is more similar to the older versions of this spec, and other specs in the game in general, yeah. but Ellie, hit us. I am going to just flat out say it. I don't like the new highest damage single target build. I don't like playing the sort of reality or Dark Ascension, and playing them together is just not a particularly enjoyable experience for me. That being said, that is all my own opinion on that. Obviously, if you enjoy that, that's fine. If you have no real preference between the two, that is also fine. Um, where I would like to make a the point on it is that when you have to swap between the two of them because you play them consistently in various different content, it is jarring at I think destroyed, from... you're saying destroyed reality mind's eye specifically, right? Destroyed reality no, and and DA void form, genuinely. Okay, yeah. Going you from because you swap both at the same time is yeah. worse. Usually. Yeah, swapping yeah, swapping both at the same time makes it even worse. But going from playing void form and uh mind's eye in keys or for whatever reason and going to DADR in in raids and then swapping between bosses, mm -hmm. it is very, very jarring. It feels like you're playing a different spec on each boss, and I personally 
thoroughly dislike this feeling and would assume that other players who are arguably less experienced or just like whatever just genuinely i just think this probably is an unhealthy situation for the spec to be in where it plays pretty drastic, so vastly yeah. differently from boss to boss um I yeah. really dislike the fact that my the cost of my Phyllis, my uh, spender, spender, and therefore the breakpoints at which I can use it, change so much. Mm -hmm. I don't mind the the duration change to uh, Dragon Plague doesn't really feel very different to me at all. That's like whatever. Like that, that's cool. Like that's a cool idea, and I like the multi I like the multi dotting aspect of uh, DR. And I kind of always have, but I really don't like DR on single target for that reason. Yeah. And I just find it very, very jarring overall. And I also find that a lot of what really drew me and has kind of like held me to Shadow recently, or not even recently, but like just like genuinely since Legion, has been the cadence of the rotation and the yeah. concept of you void bolt and then you do three globals and then you void bolt or two in the past. Like going bolt one, two, three, bolt one, two, three, and drilling in that cadence is a lot of what I find enjoyable about mm -hmm. Shadow currently, and kind of Shadow's cooldown cycle historically as well. Um, the buttons just feel very, very different, uh, and I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I think it's I also like really... kind of a lack of identity in the Dark Ascension one, right? Like you, yeah, and like the reasons you're picking some of this stuff is like just math, right? Like, you know, Destroyed Reality was actually got better two hot fixes ago because they buffed. Was that when they buffed Devouring Plague? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yes. so uh, they, they uh, buffed that with rigor with the yeah. uh yeah. With yeah. Nerf, uh, it started nerf. rearing its ugly head, yes. Um I, I what I feel like I feel like I feel like um Void Form Mind's Eye mm -hmm. plays like a Shadow Priest and D A D R plays like a purple Ellie Shaman. <laughs> I, I would even yeah. I don't know, I guess it depends on your definition, because I think even even Mind's Eye Void Form has its problems, right? Um, yeah, obviously, Builder Spender is ultimately going to have some amount of homogeneity to it, but I find yeah. like the things that the things that separate Shadow Shadow as a Builder Spender from other Builder Spenders mm -hmm. just fall by the wayside completely when you play the ADR. Yeah, and like I think before, and I think it's hard, and I think I was kind of memeing on it earlier, but it's like it's hard for these builds to kind of coexist unless they both have clear reasons. identities and like reasons to exist. Yeah, and it does kind of feel like Void Form has some something. I guess, kind of. It's kind of just a numbers game. It's just yeah. a numbers game with these things, and that's why yeah. these changes that are made to specific spells just kind of throw so people volatile. backwards and forwards across them. So yeah, so obviously, they buffed... Go I was ahead. Gonna say, obviously, I like to, I'd like to say that like even then, these are DPS differences of a couple of thousand in uh, 135, 140k DPS sims. So realistically, they aren't breaking your um, yeah. ability to perform in raids. Like, you can still play whichever one you want. I'm staunchly not playing DADR because it's farm and I don't want to and it's not very fun for me. There you go. Um, you can continue to play what you want, like, genuinely, but it, it's just... It's very strange to be in a situation as a spec where you have two vastly different play styles. Like... Yeah. I would argue, like, one of, like one of them like different play styles is good but i would say like the place we're getting to with the way dr dadr currently functions compared to void form is borderline unhealthy i think is what border it's yeah. borderline unhealthy yeah it's yeah. it's so, something that's rearing its ugly head in the background that could become a much bigger problem later and i'd rather nip it in the bud now so it's not mm. so one thing about that do you think this is what blizzard was trying to go towards when they wanted the whole choose your own shadow priest with two genuinely very very distinct play styles on a spec like did they yeah. want you to be able to pick between them and if they did do you think they wanted you to be able to pick between them like all contents so that they'd both be like good in both contents or do you think they would like them to be like you pick this think... one for this content and this one for this content or like lord or i wish they would just... tell us <laughs> or do you think like or do you think this is just like, like they didn't want it to be like this bad like but yeah. like because when it was like announced to us, like these, like you said earlier, they, it was like, do you want to play like Dark Ascension, Mind Flay, or Mind Spike, or like you, you got to pick which parts of the of Shadow in the past you kind of liked and then play it. Yes, but that just hasn't how it's worked out here. I would say, I would say what we've ended up with, with especially with DR, is like the, if DR is part is one of those components of things that Blizzard wants us to be picking from. 
That's not that's not something from Shadow's history. That's something they've made up mm. right now. Yeah, I think DR yeah. makes it worse for sure. I, I I think DR does definitely make it worse, but at the same time, it is nice having a th a thing you can offer to let's say just newer players to be able to get better performance while they're learning the spec. Although that does have the obvious issues that they have different breakpoints, like you said, LA, with the resources. So if you learn mm -hmm. the varying, the, the different varying play of costs, you're gonna feel weird when you play the other one. But at the same time, it, it was nice training wheels. It, it has been nice training yeah, wheels but for quite like, some does, time. Does we the only game, just started talking about it. Does the but game work like that though? Like, have you ever no. met someone that's like, I'm gonna take this talent that is better for me because I'm worse at the game? Like. No one wants to do that or admit that. You know what I mean? Like they just no, I, they, I know, they, but... they go to sub creation and they copy and paste, right? They go to Warcraft logs <laughs> and they copy and paste, right? So that's where it's like some of these like design fundamentals felt like nice in theory, but I just think in practice having two specs smashed into one talent tree mm. is not healthy for the game. And I and like having two ways to spend your resource with that one spell, like weird breakpoints, like I think ultimately doesn't really work and especially it doesn't work now yeah. like if destroyed reality was meant for that why is it better <laughs> than mind's eye uh, right one other thing about it i'd like to also say is i know some people especially like things like Vicklin, have said in the past that he really liked when we had less devouring plague uptime and you had to like mm. choose what you had to do in devouring plague and you had to like think around your devouring plague windows more so sure it's not a reality you can play and throw that out the window. You just have Devouring Plague. It, it may as well just read, the boss has the Devouring Plague dot. That's the text on the, on Don't, the thing. You're going to make them nerf Insanity Generation again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I... we have so much Devouring Plague. Because the difference in uptime between the two is quite small That's right great. now, It's it ends up being a fairly um, small change for that. Yeah. It's... Providing so much damage right now because they've also just made the buff on it quite big. I, I can't yeah. remember which patch that was, but they did that relatively recently because no one was playing Distorted Reality, so they just upped the numbers on it. Yes, well, so they, also... they buffed Devouring Plague, and then in the last hot fixes, they nerfed our dots, which has the knock on effect of nerfing Screams of the Void. Screams. Yep. So that meant we were less and oh and they also nerfed shadowy apparitions so we were yeah we ca we care less about pushing the button we care less about generating apparitions now so it's like. When you do that, you're removing the reasons why Mind's Eye was good, was that, yes, obviously it costs less resources, but it was also like, well, that chained into, that's better screams uptime, that's more shadowy apparitions. So when they do these specific nerfs, you see these wild build swings. And Ellie, I know you were saying the numbers aren't that crazy, which I mostly agree with, but I do think, just to put it out there, and this is taking into account some amount of movement, Void form is currently 3,000 DPS behind Dark Ascension on sing on pure single target, both builds. And then, if both builds are taking Shadow Crash, Void form is now 5,000 DPS behind in single target. Um, and to me, that's getting into a realm of like, okay, it's starting to not be choice, <laughs> um, at least in raid. Raiding is looking very, and I think Sailor said he did he did he played Dark Ascension for most of the clear. I've now killed, I've re-killed everything, or, yeah, I've killed every boss with the Dark Ascension build now on Mythic, and it's fine. It's it's doing better damage for me. Um, yeah, it feels a little, I don't know, especially the gap with the, the Shadow Crash bit, just because Dark Ascension is just naturally less punished for taking Shadow Crash than Voidform is right now, and that's mostly in part because they nerf Vampiric Touch and Maddening Touch sucks. Um things yeah <laughs> so i don't know it just feels i don't know it's a it's a weird space it's a weird state to be in and yeah, i agree it, it almost to me i think it was an interesting experiment of like shoving two builds or two specs into one spec <laughs> but I'm, i don't know i don't i don't think i'm a fan of it personally i would yeah. also point out that um in shoving two specs into one spec we've also like lost a lot of the customization around any individual one of those things because they work together in packages so well yeah i think if you're like playing to... the void form like you're just not touching the left hand, you're just not touching the left hand side of the tree if you're playing yeah. da you're not touching the right hand side you're not really touching the middle of the Yikes tree. Are on. yeah basically yeah i think like... that's also part like a lot of these talents now that they've shifted are are kind of boring <laughs> i think when we first yeah. got the talent tree reworked in, was it beta, whatever it was, I feel like there was a good amount of choice, or not choice, but like 
talents felt like they were doing different things, you know? I think the 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 real egregious one for me is the maddening touch, dark evangelism, mind devourer, phantasmal pathogen. Yep. Those four talents. Mental decay, even to be honest. Uh, uh, nature and ancient madness as well. Ancient madness is just yeah, nothing yeah, nowadays. Yeah. Like, but like just this this row of four talents there. Those four. Those four two pointers just feel exactly the same. It, it, they don't feel any different at all. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. No. Hey, it's... mind is nice. Okay, mind Okay, mind okay, okay, I would argue as a pro okay feels okay as a proc, but like it feels okay. Maddening touch and dark dark evangelism and phantasmal pathogen all feel exactly the same. And they're all so insignificant that you could pick any either or. The only reason they would pick a Madding Touch is because you have to get the Mind Bender. Like, yeah. Path of the Pathogen and Dark Evangelism are basically the same. I love explaining Madding that too. Like the in the build guide, like we I have this, we call them flex points, right? Of saying like, yeah, you can put these points wherever you want. Like it doesn't, <laughs> like even from a damage output perspective, it's whatever <laughs> you know. Like, yeah, um, this is. Really noticeable if you looked at sub creation for the first half of this season, where like the top ten players were all playing randomly different points, and they were all performing adequately matter. enough for their yeah. different content. And yeah. It didn't matter. Oh, gosh, yeah. I think talent, I mean, talent even remove mind spikes for some of them. That was pretty big, but it didn't matter. I don't yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily mind talent variety in that sense. I just find that talent variety, when the impact of those talents is also completely meaningless, is like is like variety in name only mm -hmm. like yeah all of these things it, taste exactly the same it just depends yeah. which one you choose it would have been nice if they were a tiny 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 weeny bit stronger and therefore they all had some like a slightly different associated gameplay relevancy to them all if possible i don't think I mean, it's kind of a hard thing to get but what would what would pathogen even be for that though like pathogen is like literally just I mean, buffs apparition kind of does do that but it would only do that in a world where we kind of had like mindset <laughs> It's also yeah, like, like if you were able to spread if the spread devouring yes. plague thing was more of a thing too that would also bump path like I think that's kind of what's missing is that like these talents on an island are boring right but I think yes. what's what's missing is why you would want to take them in the larger context of like a build so like if the if there was a build that was more heavily like I guess Idol Nazoth for example if that was more of a thing especially on single target even where it's like yeah getting more dot ticks is meaningful you're like okay well i'm definitely going to pick screams and now you're talking about like well if you could actually make dots do damage in the build maddening touch dark evangelism start to pop up as being good things yeah, it, right it's, but it's we're just, missing that that meat right it just doesn't exist I, it's all yeah it's so, it's so funny to me that we have this build their own shadow priest and there are two wildly different builds and both of them do not care about what you pick on this row no, no, one of them yeah. has to because maddening touch is the only way to get to my meta but if you remove that requirement just doesn't care what you pick on that row it doesn't care at all funnily enough with the recent change to shadowy apparition the whole where you were forced to take two points and find out some pathogen no longer the case you can oh, yeah. the even, the with the, now. even with the tier set um, yeah you can yeah. remove it now <laughs> uh, yeah by the way after we lose the tier set guess what else goes away uh, uh can we unspec we can't unspec okay yeah, we you can't can. unspec shadow apparitions. No, you can't. Not the top three, no. Or misery. You actually, you actually yeah. can't because you need to get. No. I mean, you wouldn't want to. They, they do, they do enough damage, but yeah. It's so, funny. so I think to transition us on, I know we're kind of rambling a bit. I, we obviously don't have enough time to cover this, but I do want to like, we'll kind of close off the podcast with this, and I think if there's some interest, we can come back next week or in a couple of weeks. Because I think, really, what I think we're getting at with this whole podcast, and especially from like the Mythic Plus perspective, is that the current design of shadow feels like it's struggling and frustratingly hard to balance um, in a world where we have all these other problems happening. And it just feels, I don't know, like unsatisfying to me or boring. <laughs> I mean, even in some cases uh, and that's where I think, and I've thrown this around, I think sales are turning around. Like does shadow need another rework? Um, I know that I'm there are the R word. <laughs> like which is hard because i think there are there and i do want to i do agree with this there are certain things about shadow's current build and play style that i like that are good um there's a lot that i don't <laughs> but that doesn't mean i want to like fully scrap everything um but yeah so I'll, I'll go to we'll go to ellipsis on this first i think like what are your generic thoughts I and mean, we've kind of covered it a little bit but like in terms of if you want to talk about 
what do you like with the current design of Shadow? What what would you wish was better or different? And we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but give us your give us your highlights. Um, as I said, I don't really want to say that I think that the spec needs some sort of fundamental redesign or rework. I think that there's just a lot in this talent tree that isn't living up to what its like potential really. Sure. Um, I am a big fan of the way Shadow does its AoE currently. I really like Psychic Link, and I like Devouring Plague being for AoE and single target. I was not a large proponent of Mindseer in the previous season. Sure. Um, and I think that Shadow also has a very varied and interesting single target rotation. And it would be a shame to see that be devolved into a two-button rotation AoE spam that typically we see from AoE rotations as we get to higher target counts. Shadow's yep. interesting single target rotation translates currently to an interesting AoE rotation as well. Yep. It's the same. I do have to clarify. It's the same rotation. And maybe you find that particularly annoying or unsatisfying. But as far as the rotation go itself goes, I find that having a more satisfying base rotation for both is better so i'm very happy with that you're okay um, just to be clear though you're saying you're happy with the void eruption base rotation right yes not the darkest I, I i frankly i i don't think the da1 okay. really spreads out into the areas of the game that i play as far as mythic plus goes yep. like it's great for lower and medium keys but void yep. form just like genuinely leaps and bounds ahead in high keys quick, for sure quick interject do you also yeah. like that build's damage pack, like the way that build plays outside of cooldowns? Because that is obviously very similar to the DA DR build all the time. Uh, the DR. Besides DR, yes. Uh, genuinely, yeah. yeah. I don't. I I find that maybe I'm mind spiking a bit too much. Um, I really enjoyed the way it worked prior to the changes. I liked having Flay and Spike, yeah. because I liked the idea that I liked the way that you could always, through good gameplay you could always avoid pressing the same button twice in a row. Sure. It felt like a organic version of Windwalker Monk in that sense. Mm. Like, it didn't feel like I was being contrived into this by mastery or something. Like, I genuinely felt like you could play for, like, two minutes straight, pressing a different button every global, and that felt great. It's those ruts where you have to press Mind Spike four or five times that just don't feel good no matter what bad. content you're doing. I mean, to be fair, pressing Mind Flay three or four times in the world is also bad. It's just you're only hitting yeah. one button. For like no, but like you go seconds. no, but you you'd go like between spike prox mf between spike prox mind flay insanity devouring plague and mind blast. Oh oh yeah, you could yeah, press. Sorry, yeah, that's what you meant. You, meant you could when press we still a had different. Both. Yeah, you could press a different yeah. button every global. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, right. that was cool. I like that. So Ellie, to wrap that quick up so we can continue, would you say would it be fair to say that you love the void form rotation that you love? Yes. And then the rotation outside of that you you, you enjoy. Although that you could definitely feel like it could be uh, improved, but when devouring, when when a, when distorted reality is added to the mix, you find that it loses appeal. Yes, because it takes away devouring plagues, therefore it adds mind spikes, and it also removes any real thought about devouring plagues. So it removes anything you have to care about. Is that fair? Yes. It also yeah. it it also kind of encompasses like it also makes the rotation feel less fluid in void form because the insanity generation cadence for plague just is so much worse honestly yeah, yeah. like right. that 10 insanity difference is really big for how it feels i i just wanted to specifically point out that they kind of because some people might say that they, they do play different the same outside of cooldowns but they the, the, the slight adjustments are impactful here yeah yes i think right. so the last I'm thing ellie just a question on this because you said you like psychic link in this and you, you're saying, just so I'm reading between the lines a little bit, you're saying you're like, you like it because we can still do AoE while being big priority target funnel, right? Um, That's not what I was saying specifically, but that is another factor I do enjoy. I do enjoy okay. Shadow's role of like priority target damage and like the ranged outlaw rogue style of things. Yeah. What I like is the fact that Psychic Link is a surefire way to preserve shadows aoe rotation uh, sure through yeah all target counts got it yep versus before because which you... was like you hit some breakdown and you're like now you're only pressing mines here or whatever yes right? you, yes yeah. you hit a point where after x targets y button falls away because the aoe button is now scaling and the y the other button isn't yep i 
I like that Psychic Link allows us to preserve a rotation through various target counts and keep it consistent and interesting. I think it also I makes don't... the spec easier to play, right? Because before we had all these like crazy target breakdowns, which is like, how many targets are you fighting? You know, yes, drop, exactly. drop, 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 death, I, yeah. drop this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, I, f I find the whole how many targets am I hitting? What buttons do I stop pressing? Tedious to, and to, yeah. unenjoy and not an enjoyable aspect of playing the game. Really, I like having a consistent, strong area rotation that I feel comfortable and confident using. And so, I feel like Psychic Link does a lot for providing that confidence. Do you think Psychic Link still does that at 15%? I mean, objectively, yes, because we don't have anything else. But it is at 15%. It is feeling very... Yeah, wow. very noodly overall. Yeah. Um, and I f it feels more and more like I am just doing single targeting keys. Yeah. Like, I'm not, obviously. Like, I am doing yeah. AoE. There is AOE happening, but it is feel it's starting to feel more and more like I'm just doing single target. Yep. And that's like the lack of burst with Void Torrent is a big part of that. Yeah. Okay. All great points. All right. Um Sailder, you're you're up next. I know we I think I think you and I have gone back and forth on a lot of these points, but give me your kind of highlights on you know, does do you think Shadow needs a call it a rework, whatever you want to say, but like just I'd say changes, even if you want to not say the rework word. Um, you know, talk about things you like, things you'd like to see changed. Go for it. I I don't want to call it a rework. I, I would like to call it more of a streamlining. I want or them to decide. Perhaps? Yeah, or an iteration. I want them to decide. They want to, I want them to take what they currently have and decide finally what the actual identity of Shadow will be. Mm-hmm. I basically wanted to pick between Void Form or Dark Ascension and just have one. I have a preference. My preference is Void Form, but I would play Dark Ascension. I know Ellie would be very upset if this happened, but I would still play it, and I yeah. think it would be fine. But the Void Form rotation just feels better. So if they did decide for something like Dark Ascension, I feel like they'd have to do some game gameplay changes to, for like... Sure. Agreed. Allow it think, to feel better, but, but I think because I think D DA felt great at the start of the expansion. Yes, honestly, I think DA, I think Void Form was genuinely overwhelming in that situation. Mm. If but, we could pick, if we could pick between season one DA and season two Void Form, that would be a genuinely interesting choice. Mm. Yeah, but just that is that is not that, that that is not something that a talent tree can do. That is something that that a class or spec selection screen can do. <laughs> So, but mm. Sailor, on that point too, is that same thing with Mindflay and Mindspike, or is that different for you? I don't have strong opinions either way on either of the buttons. I really don't care about the visuals of either. Yeah. I prefer the Mindspike's gameplay because... Sorry. I prefer Mindflay's gameplay generally. The baseline spells, Mindflay feels better. It's a channeling spell. If you get it cut off halfway, you've got half the value. That's nice. I prefer... When you have when you have when you add mind spike insanity and mind flay insanity to the mix, mm. I drastically prefer mind spike insanity. Yep. The spell feels so much better to press. But I know that a lot of people prefer mind flay. It looks better, for one. But for me, it doesn't matter. I I, I okay. massively prefer the gameplay aspect of having it in one global and it, and it basically protecting itself. If mind flay insanity gave you a buff that lasted for like four ticks. And it just let you cast four ticks out or whatever, and it stacked up to like say eight. Like they could do quite a lot of things to add some protection to the mind flay insanity version to make it feel better, or some people have suggested something like having the mind flay when it procs the stage of insanity, it upgrades itself into an instant cast mind spike. Yeah, straight up just turns itself yep. into a mind spike. Done. So I don't care. It's one of those things where it probably would be better for the class yet again to just have one of them. Pick an identity, really roll with it, and really yeah. make it interesting, right? Yeah. Because this will also add more flexibility to the talent points. I've, I've got some points here. Mm -hmm. uh, crime cover briefly, but we don't have options to specialize in AOE damage. This no, have... is controversial because a lot of people really like having a very high overlap between single target and AOE. This is a positive with the current game's design. That's true. Specs that yep. do both are better. You're However, saying specs that do both without sacrificing too much yes. in one way or the other. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. They are better. They are better. However, right now, we just can't spec more AoE. And with the whole mm -hmm. changes to Psychic Link in the recent nurse, that feels awful because they just keep hitting Psychic Link over and over the head with a stick. And yeah. we can't just choose to do more AoE to compensate. There isn't an option. There's no extra tools in our kit to let us do that. We have already taken the few that they've given us. And often we've already taken the few they've already given us because they're just better on single target anyway. Yeah, yeah like we can't, we can't hit our single target to up our AoE. Yes. And that feels, like, the that feels like the main design failure or Psychic Link's current iteration is that we can't choose to hit that for more AoE if we desire, if we've desired to. Having that choice would be good, especially if it worked out in a way that's relatively similar for like Mythic Plus. Like if you could say right now, choose to do five attempts on the last single target, but you'd up the AoE back to what it used to be, Ellie, you might do more overall, you might do similar overall. I haven't put much thought into it. You also, but having you would the option also... would be good. You would also definitely pick different and pick different things, different keys mm. in that situation. Like you would not yeah. play, you would not play the amount of AOE that you would in Brackenhide in Nelfarian's Lair, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but realistically, like you can argue that there is like some ability to do that right now with Insidious Aya versus Idol of Nazoth. Yeah, but like you already yeah. don't play Aya, so <laughs> yeah, this is part of the whole force build archetypes. I think that you were also trying to allude to with. When you pick DA and everything, you pick the left-hand side of the tree, you take all of those nodes, and you don't really touch the other ones, you always take Cthune. It's fine, we love Cthune. Um, but the whole... that isn't flex, because no. so much of the tree is allocated to each individual playstyle that if you remove those points to make room for more interesting like options for like AoE and single target, you would probably kill Dark Ascension or Void Forms but being a yes. choice. And that's why I really want them to pick an identity, because yeah, then they have so much more room. Yeah, Shadow feels like it ha you you pick you pick one of the two, and then you have half a talent tree to work with. It just yeah. feels like the illusion of choice, right? It's like, yeah, all of these are technically talent choices, right? But one, many of them aren't actual playstyle choices, and two, a lot of them are defined by one, like Dark Ascension or Void Eruption, versus like how you actually want to play, right? Um, it's like a math thing, not a does I want to play the game thing, right? I don't necessarily think that the math thing versus playstyle thing is a problem in every aspect. I think that talents. I think the problem is more the fact that your playstyle hard dictates what math talents you choose. Yeah, but I think there could be. You could kind of. Hit, I think there's a better middle ground that exists where there are less points that are just blah math things you know yeah i mean like the 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 row with manning touch dark evangelism mind of our pathogen and then mastermind screams tormented spirits into the desire like yeah. oh, those three those blocks are like very math he math decides this heavy yeah especially um, like that's like mastermind right that's like you look at that and it's just question mark what does this do like to mm -hmm. my damage like, no like one really knows because there's so many hidden aspects of getting things like critical strike chance, for example. Yeah, like yeah, Mastermind but... versus Mastermind and Screams coming off Death Speaker is like one of the most ambiguous choices. Like, My favorite thing no is Mastermind re... going into Nazoth, which has nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> yeah, and Screams going into Nazoth, which has everything to do with it, and Screams into yes. Nazoth makes genuine sense. Yes. And then, like, the Spirits line of going, like, Phantasmal Pathogen into Auspicious Spirits, into Tormented Spirits, into Yard of Yogg makes loads of sense. Yep. Um, Void Torrent into Malediction or Insidious Aya into Idol of Cthune. Aya into Cthune doesn't make that much sense, but Void well, Torrent, the Void Torrent side of things into Cthune makes sense, and That's obviously fine, yeah. Bender into Escape of Torment into a Charge makes a lot of sense. The Zoth just feels like a weird, a weird place. Yeah, and I think it's also, like, we have to get I guess to me, I'd like to live in a world where we get a little better than makes sense. I would also like to live in a world where it's like there's some choice there, which I do think is kind of the meme with triple idol setups. Like the fact that you can get three of them at once for me kind of dilutes how that choice to begin with, right? Like if you can just get three out of the four, well, then where's the choice? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, you say that. But it does have a choice. It has the choice of picking three instead of picking two and getting something else. I know, but like yes. that something else. In the is past, so... that was enough. That something else was enough. Yeah. But but 
the way that the, the, it's just the numbers. It's just numbers. The numbers have fallen out to say that three is better than two. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So and it's like also Shadow is like relatively high on the two pointer talents now compared to like a lot of the more modern talent revamps. Like Retribution's most recent revamp. <laughs> okay, but I, I think like really has I think just Retribution. Took the entire tree. I think it, I think it is an abomination the Retribution talent tree. I think Why? if you have a talent tree where you've you've fully spec'd out the kit and there are four talent nodes that you have not picked, that's a problem. Um, yeah. Okay. Valid. 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 I, I I think there's like you're that's like complete illusion of choice. Yes. Totally. Holy's Holy's is at least more interesting. Yeah. I, Holy I think, has Holy has Holy just has so many talents. Yeah. Yeah. They just yeah. It's just kind of I don't know. It just feels all over the place. And yeah, I, I say that I agree with your point too of like this is a hard problem to solve when it's like, I think to make things more interesting, you have to make people pick how much single target, how much AOE, you know what I mean? Like you, it shouldn't be possible to get yeah. both like for, not for free, but like you shouldn't be able to do really good single target and really good AOE at the same time without moving talents around. That feels dangerous. Um, but that is kind of where we're at with a lot of specs right now is that they, they do just get, AOE or whatever they call AOE without dropping a single target, if at all, right? Um, so yes. it's hard to advocate for a world where it's like, I think you need that in order to make the talent tree have interesting choices. But if the game is going to be balanced around you being able to do both at once, that's impossible, right? So it you start just not having like at that point, if you can't trade single target for AOE, you lose things that you can make reasonable trades from a from a personal standpoint yeah like as a player that is a trade that some like most players can definitely make they, they can just say i want to do more aoe i want to do single target if that isn't a question that's on the table anymore what questions of that variety can you ask that uh, a player yeah. can answer themselves without consulting a computer for example yeah and i think for me when i look at our talent tree and this is probably where we'll end off here it's just like we have these idols, but they don't really, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of play style in there. Like there's off that doesn't change what you do like at all. Yogg Saron doesn't change what you do at all. It just makes you pick void form usually. Um, Yashiraj really doesn't change what you do. If anything, inescapable torment kind of does, but even that's just like you, you press death a bit more. Um, yeah. yeah. And Cthune, to be honest, also really doesn't change what you're doing. As much as I love the Void Torrent spawning a Tendril interaction, and I like how cool it looks, it doesn't actually change what you're doing, you know? Well, especially when we take it literally all the time. Um, so it just feels like, I don't know, just it's disappointing, one of, you know? It's Funny one enough. of the biggest cool power moments that Shadow has, though, and I love it yeah. dearly and would yeah. love it to stay in any I agree. capacity. Because I agree. Pressing it... Pressing Void Torrent and getting three tentacle procs feels great. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, two of the most impactful things you can do with those idols right now, like the most impactful things about the idols, is actually with Cthune and with the Oxyron, respectively. Whereas with Cthune's is actually just gaming the prop rate, which is extremely stupid. Yep. And not something that anyone really cares about. You can game the prop rate slightly to gain a few hundred more DPS. It doesn't really happen with the Dark Ascension build, by the way. That build just does it naturally. It's a Void Form thing. But yeah. you can optimize Void Form in a way that gets you pretty significignantly more tentacle procs. It's complicated. Three point, the 3.5 second gap between mine's <laughs> works. But, and then Yoxron has similar things, but with cancel auras. Um, oh and it's really awful. It's degenerate because... as hell. They're both degenerate. Because... That's, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, like... I, don't think, I don't think the Cthulhu one's that degenerate, really. No, that one's just a rotational change. That, one's, that one is actually one of the few things in our kit that changes your rotation in a way that if you decided to play around it, it's positive without being too bad. The Oxyron one is awful because how the hell do you know in 25 seconds from now the pack will still be running and therefore you should have cancelled Yogg so it didn't spawn. Yeah, it's... Because you, you, you have to do it before it happens because you don't have any control over the same thing. Yes. And the only reason why it's so impactful is because having a Yogg is so good or was so good it's a bit less good now it's only it's also not really that important in higher keys because you literally just mm -hmm. vomit out yogs yeah well, that's another thing i very briefly wanted to mention tormented spirits is a design flaw failure oh it's yes failure. got yeah. problematic scaling to say the least it scales with targets quadratically it should like and when the damage to a from a spirit can has so much damage on it because of 
A, the spirit, and B, the Oxeron that spawns with it, this is a problem. Yeah, because I would like... Yeah, I thought a lot it's a... of the... Sorry, yeah, you say... No, you. No, you. Right. When you have... If, if people have been watching The Great Push, for example, they see a lot of targets being dragged on the bosses. This is just time efficient in general, but for Shadow especially so, because all of those extra targets have multiplied the proc rate for Tormented Spirits linearly. This is a linear increase, so you're going to gain more procs for Tormented Spirits, which means more yep. sets of Tormented Spirits. This means you're going to get more damage on the boss because there's just more of them spawning, more Spirits. At the same time, every single set of Spirits contributes towards the Yogg-Saron, with all the nerves, Yogg-Saron is disproportionately more single target than anything else. This results in a very, very, very big single target game. Yeah. Because we you have for. basically a permanent Yogg-Saron out. Yeah. When you have pulls like this. Permanent. And he does a lot of damage. Now, that is all entirely because Tormented Spirits does not scale linearly with targets. That means on single target, it barely does anything. I think it's I think it's about 0. 0.5, 0. 0.7, yes, uh, very yeah. small numbers, yeah. but two points. Yeah. So half of it, like a, a quarter of a percent each. But when you have eight targets, they're like 8% DPS a point or something stupid. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's my last complaint about the talent design. And yeah. it's another reason why that, that row is so weird, because it starts with Auspicious Spirits, which is now extremely weak compared to any of the previous iterations it's ever had. It's incredibly bad now. Followed yeah. by Tormented Spirits, which is a question mark. Then there's Yogg-Saron, which is quite frankly absurdly broken, but you need void form to add the extra spirit generation to your baseline kit to make it actually usable on single target. And that's what carries yeah. it on single target. It's it's a weird place to be. So, yeah, so I think to close us off here, I think it just feels like the balance of Shadow's kit and play style is all kind of feeling like it's hanging by a thread. And like we've seen that like these small little surgical changes to the kit have massive ramping implications. So I think the reason why I've been, I say the word rework or changes or iteration, whatever you want to say, is that I'm kind of... I feel like we're on this really like edge where it can easily fall off a cliff and just start falling apart um, with like one extra hotfix, right? Um, which is why I think going into 10.2 and beyond, it's like, yeah, maybe it is worth some time to fix up and shore up some of these problems so that it is yeah. in a more stable place, both from a utilities perspective, which I think we, we covered quite heavily, but I think also from a, a damage and play style and like how you do damage perspective as well um so yeah so stay tuned i know so i have i've currently written eight pages of feedback on this and i'm about 60 percent of the way done um i'm hoping to have something out hopefully next weekend we'll see i don't know it's it's hard to write up that much stuff um and then yeah maybe we'll do another podcast on it soon tm on yeah more iteration rework stuff because like, there's, there's just a lot here right it's, it's hard to cover it all in the short time we have so mm -hmm. yeah and i'd like to just finish with a uh, closing comment on Serdos thing i think Please. getting rid of torment getting rid of tormented spirits is a very obvious first step frankly for tidying up aoe single target and really just harmonizing the rest of the tree mm. tormented spirits is taking up space that could be used for something else more reasonable and meaningful it is a problem in AoE, and it is the root cause for apparitions receiving like four straight nerfs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if we could get the apparition damage back to where it was prior to this and mm -hmm. remove tormented spirits, we would have more reasons to be going to the apparition side of the tree and a lot more justification there to kind of fight against the old, the uh, left and right hand sides as well. Like the middle is like falling behind pretty drastically right now. Yeah. Uh, Tormented Spirit on single target because Tormented Spirits is just that good on AoE. Mm. Okay. All right. Sailor, any final thoughts before we, we close this out here? My final thought is we forgot to mention Rage Utility. In brackets, there isn't any other than PI. That's it. Good job. We I did mean, it. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. You can master spell some debuffs sometimes. Yeah, but so can the Holy Priest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll say, I said it earlier, like, I, I do think. It's like if the only thing Shadow's bringing differently than Holy and Disc is a kick, that feels pretty pretty bad. Actually, the biggest one is dispersion. Funnily, yeah. it's just dispersion. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Dispersion is an incredibly, incredibly powerful button. 
Yeah. The healers go flop. Compare, like, you compare Holy Paladin to one of the healer priests, the, the healer priest just goes flop and dies. Yeah, true. Yeah, MD MD is MD is useful in Sarkin experiments, uh Zlider, but like healing healing priest also brings that. And Mistweaver also brings it on a Sark more so than uh any of the pre specs do. Yeah, I just think it's like and I think you, Ellie, you actually brought this up earlier. Like, what Shadow brings in raid that the other two doesn't is basically kick, and then Vampiric Embrace. Legitimately, like that is something that we have. I know it is technically a class talent, but the way that we use it is that different. But after getting nerfed over and over and over again, I don't know. It's just, I think there needs to be something else for Shadow specifically. I don't know. So, I mean, uh, I'm kind of, just, I'm kind of like concerned with that. With like the the constant, the constant thing of like Blizzard saying. Oh, we don't balance DPS specs around PI. As long as they keep doing that, PI is enough. That's true. I mean, that's that's fair. I do I do wonder though, with the augmentation mic that just got dropped, and we'll see how it goes in the next race to world first. Um, this whole idea of support specs and like how specs buff others. I don't know. We might see things might get a little spicy in the next tier or so. Uh, if Blizzard, I if, mind some more. If, yeah. Blizzard op if Blizzard openly admit that power infusion is a factor in shooting shadows single like single target especially DPS, yeah. there will be riots. There will be yeah, yeah. Because if we don't have it right that. now, we are in the absolute dumpster <laughs> in raid. Uh, funny aside, we'll buy that. But even if you accounted for like before we got back on single target, we were like top five on Rashok if you added yeah. power infusion. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Now I, I haven't checked recently, what? but with the last bus, we were like literally rank rank one if you add a PI. I don't know what it. Yeah, uh, like including augment, that doesn't count. Yeah, like you Sorry. you have to I don't know, like. You, I, it's hard to just like hand wave power infusion it's because hard. at the end of the day, it is doing an enormous amount of work. Yeah, but like, but it's toxic. <sighs> and I hate it. I, guess, I would love yeah, I don't know. if it was disconnected from my personal power infusion. If I could just press PI on somebody else when they wanted it, and I had my PI when I pressed my cooldowns. Oh I yeah, okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll do it like Wormstone. So we'll have a PI stone that you give out <laughs> to someone, and then they can click it when they want. Lovely. I'm sold. Sell Picked. it. <laughs> Perfect. Ship it. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, all right. Well, we've been we've been kind of rambling on a, a lot. I know we usually do questions, but um, it is getting late, so we're gonna I'm gonna call this guy without questions. But I do appreciate everyone hanging out. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, thanks for thanks for watching. And yeah, if you want us to keep doing more of these, I do I do take feedback well. If if there's a specific topic that comes up you want us to cover or something like that, DM me or message any of us, and we'll uh, we'll get some motivation for me to, to scramble everyone together to get this rolling so and, yeah if yeah. you have any questions just ping us in discord or yeah. post comments on this video yeah. when public posts it for example just hit us we can yeah, I mean, answer them in the discord stuff, and sorry. in the next one we do for example there sorry to yeah. cut you off no that's all no, that's all that's all i really got we'll uh we'll be around and yeah like i said if there is more appetite of like handling do we do we redesign shadow? Do we rework it? Do we what changes do we want to see? Yeah, maybe we'll do that in a future episode. So again, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you next time.